Hi, I'm Jess, an LNER driver from Newcastle, and today we're going to play on Train Simulator World 4. We're going for this one on the end. I think we'll go beginner, do you reckon? Or would you say standard's more appropriate? Jump in as experienced. Right. Um, let's start off with the introduction for the Class 801 and just see how that compares to your own knowledge. In this training module, you'll be learning how to drive a BR Class 801 electric multiple unit. When you are ready, climb aboard. Never mind, fall down. Take a seat in the driver's position so that you can prepare the train for service. Right. Press Y. Y. So yeah, just look at look at the, look down at the seat and then the button prompt should appear. Oh uh, okay, right, cool. For this introduction you'll be completing a full loop of the circuit and performing passenger operations when you reach the next stop. To unlock the control desk, you'll need to insert and set the master key. So yeah, just use the A button to interact with anything. If you tilt the left analog stick forward, you can zoom in so you can get a little bit better control. Oh, that's cool. Right. The reverser is used to determine the direction of travel. Ooh, all right, okay, so that's just like a... I want a new roll. Set the headlights, as this will let others around you know that Daylight. this train is operational. What we have to next? To begin loading passengers, you'll need to open the passenger doors. Okay, right, doors on the left. Let me a couple of seconds there, might have been a slightly quick. Does everything line up with, your, with where you expect it to be? Um, I'll set up the cab a bit differently, but so far it's kind of the, some of the stuff that we need to do, yeah. Um, that orange bar that's loading up near the time, is that like passengers or...? Yes, that would be passengers loading. Uh, right. Represents them getting on board. And... Ah, tell me right. It's time to depart. Oh, okay, Close I'm doing a lot of my setup doors. there. That's fine though, right. Um, close the left side. Right, so as a driver, I wouldn't close the doors. That's the TM's job, but obviously. Yep. That's fine. Direction switch. Get into forward. This train features a combined power and brake handle. So, to get the train moving, move the handle into the power range. Uh, pop that in a one. Oh, alright, that's cool. Oh, alright, we're moving. Coasting is a method used to efficiently maintain speed and reduce motor stress. Keeping to speed limits is important. If you begin over speeding, apply a small amount of braking force by moving the power handle into the braking range. First introduced in September 2019, the Class 801s were built as a replacement for the aging Intercity 125 and 225 sets, which were the primary trains used on the East Coast Main Line at the time. The Class 801 fleet were designed as purely electric multiple units. However, they feature a single 560 kilowatt diesel engine fitted to one of the coaches for emergency use. Those engines you get a maximum of about, depending on the gradient, about 20 mile per hour. Um, 
I have had them up at 71 before after I had a failed train night. I use it to get into London, but um, yeah, very, very rare. It's more than the 800s would use them, because I have a five. Uh, whoop, you bugger, that's where you're going. Don't know what it is, but our remote keeps making this kind of wild. All right. All right, so I'm stopping in at one point, right, I'm stopping at 1.5 kilometers. Unlocking the human. You're now approaching the station, so prepare to slow down the train. Use the power handle to apply some braking force to bring the train to a gentle stop in the indicated position. It's really weird of being in like kilometers per hour instead of miles per hour. I'm like, what? Uh, that was slightly too strong there on the brake. What am I at? Nine mile, right, eight mile per hour. Okay, that was really slow coming in. Give that a little bump to get to the end. How's the acceleration and braking feel? Uh, braking, I'm still learning, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, that, this. <laughs> It's difficult for now most that the of us. train has stopped. Yeah, but the acceleration's the not too bad on it. It's a bit weird of having kilometers per hour on the top. Uh doors on the left. But um yeah, other than that it's it's canny. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I did think I'd overrun the station because I thought I'd gone past it already, but Good it's fine. work. <laughs> that concludes all the basics of operating this train. I think we'll hop into a service next because that's going to kind of give you the most freedom to set up the train how you like. Ah, oh, champion. Uh, so it's not going to be an absolute cold start. Yeah. Uh, the train will be running, but you'll be able to set it up and get the passengers on board. <laughs> All right, so on up doors. So that is right, doors on the right. Ding. Shall we release? Yeah, so just have a look around the cab, make sure everything's how you want it. Or only thing that's missing off there is you'd normally have like a little speed meter that you can have in the bottom right corner. All right. Um, but other than that, everything else seems that where it says not mile power, that'd normally just be the speed, the ASL. That'd be like where we um, just can just set the speed limit that we'd want the train to be limited to. Um, but other than that, everything looks as it should, pretty much. Can you interact with the TMS or not? Oh, you can. Oh, it right, okay. It might have limited functionality. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, oh, can he? With the 800s, we normally have the back pan up. That's the only difference there, but that's where kind of different from the other talks with that. And engine status. I think it was a no, tie break stress. Alright, so they're just a solid, that's fine. Just keep that maxed. Alright, so let's play with it. No, it's fine. Okay, cool. The only thing that's missing off that bit there is we'd normally have an option where we can basically just have like the home scene, home screen set. Um, but again, that's something minor. Um, don't know what that bottom one is. We don't have that one. Yeah, it's fine. If you wanted to, you can jump out the chair and you can have a look at the fuse panel behind you. And you've got your safety systems. All right, let's have a look. 
So to make this accessible to most players, the safety systems are kind of off by default. Yeah. And you can put them on to like increase the challenge. Yeah. So if I was mobilizing a set, uh, as soon as I come in, I'll put my bag down on the second man seat and I'd be looking at this back panel. I'd be looking to see if this OTMR button is lit. Um, that's basically like the black box on the train. Um, we need to have at least one running on the train for us to actually be able to drive it. Um, and again, we're looking, you know, um, if we take one off a depot, at times the sleep mode might be on. Um, just basically mean the trains like, you know, in power saving mode type thing. So we just turn that off. Um, a lot of the other stuff, um, like with your switches down here for your traction modes and your pan selectors. Uh, the cool thing about these is, um, can you see how it's flat against the surface there because it's in the normal position? If it was in any other position, the flap would actually be up, so you'd automatically have your eyes directed towards it. Uh, with your TPWS, we normally have a seal on it. Um, and basically, if we have to use that, the seal would be cut off. Um, so we're checking that basically those seals are there, and if it's not, uh, we're giving controller ring just to basically report it and find out why not. And again, with um, these isolation switches here, we'd be making sure they're all in the up position. Um, obviously, there's a couple here that aren't, but obviously that's just because they're knocked off for the game. Um, fuse cabinet, um, we'd basically be looking to make sure these are all up. If any of them weren't, again, it'd be a call or a tachy. Um, and then again, down here, we're looking to see we've got a seal on the emergency protection kit down here. That's got like our detonators, uh, T-cocks and stuff like that in it. Um, fire extinguisher, we need to check and make sure it's in the green. Um, so we're not, you know, have a fire on board and have a red uh, bar, that might be a bit of an issue. Um, and the same, again, with the first aid kit there, we'd be looking to make sure that's got a seal on it. Um, from there, um, we'd have both doors locked just to make sure the cab's secure. And then that's when we then go into the seat and um, basically get the train set up to go. So yeah, right, I'll jump back in the seat since it's telling me that I'm, uh, it's out. Let's have a look, have we got interlock? Or do I have to do interlock? Uh, yeah, I have to lock the doors, right. So yeah, again, this isn't something we do on our trains, the TMs do it, but um, there's a lot of operators that are driver-only operators that will. Right, so I'd normally give two back here, but since I'm dispatching myself, um, I won't have to. So I've got a green. So leaving you it. Can start moving. Doesn't. Want, oh, do you know what it is? Oh, I haven't even got me key in. I was wondering what was going on there. I was like, what? All right, I'll put that back up to where it should be. Right, is the DRA set? No, right, DRA should have been set, never mind. Um, well, I'll tell you what, since it is pretty much from dead, I'll go through everything with you. So, first things first, DRA should always be set when you leave a cab, so when you come into a cab, it should always be set. Um, and then we'd go through the full mobilisation. So, as soon as that green comes, that DRA goes off. What the DRA basically does is it stops us being able to get traction power. So we won't be able to move very far at all. Um, and it's just kind of a reminder if we're stood at a red or anything like that. So just why I turn the train on. All right. Feels so weird doing this on like a game. All right, into neutral. All right, is that going to kick anything off? No, All right. Because everything else is done in it, All right? So I'm guessing this is literally like straight from dead. Just with, because the GSMR says it's done the test, but then the lights aren't on or anything like that. So let's have a look, want to be dimmed. Uh, right. Because you wouldn't normally be able to load passengers on if the train's dead. That's why it's kind of got me thrown a little bit, but it's fine. Um. Right, and then we'd normally have to have our head cord put in, which... Ooh, it does automatically with the wildcard, all right. I quite like that. Right, so... And the only other thing, we wouldn't have a down pan sign on that either. Right, let's see if it lets us switch it over. So we're going to traction status. Right, so then we've got the pan down, hold it for five seconds. Three, four, five. That should now be down, yeah. Got the pan up. Ah, 
that. Just put the front one back up. That's fine. All right. Something you wouldn't be able to do in real life. If you wanted to, you can quickly check the outside. If you That's... click down the white analog stick, it will jump you into an exterior camera. You'd be able to fly around the train and see that pantograph raised. Oh, oh okay. Oh, right, there yeah. you go. I just don't hold it in for ages. And then you can move the analog sticks and move the camera around the train. Yeah. I must admit the train looks very realistic. <laughs> Oh, I'm flying. Looks like a nice morning. I like the fact it's it all one, two, three, four. All right. All right, jump back in. So you just click it again and you jump back into the cab. Ah, all right, that was quite cool. Right, so we'll leave that up just since it sounds the default pan. You can change that, but it's fine. Um, just go through the full mobilization. Easier. It doesn't let me on that. Why would you check that one? Let me do that. Just fine. Right, normally when the cab gets turned on as well, um, you'd have to hit your train fault acknowledgement that would kick off. And then a couple of seconds later, you'd have to press your AWS to do the test. And then you basically just look at these buttons up here, make sure, because at first when you turn it on, they'll all illuminate. And then after that, they'll all go out, or at least you hope they go out, because if not, then you've got an issue. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, color on your lights here, you should have a yellow around your line volts. And then uh, the VCB one would be off unless you go through a neutral section. Um, then that'd have a red ring around it. Um, and just with the safety systems being isolated, that should have a yellow ring around it as well, the safety systems isolation one. But again, um, looks alright so far. Uh, train wash shouldn't be illuminated because you're not going through train wash. That'd limit your train at three mile per hour. Um, but yeah, other than that, everything looks good. All right, sweet. All right, let's get this train moving then. So, green, into low. Don't need to do two back. Pop you into forward. Oh, no, not off, Jesus. Didn't want to have to do all that again. Great. So, leaving Newark, next stop, Peterborough. Oh. All right, and we are leaving. So normally when I leave platforms, I always do it nice and slow and anywhere just to let it build up. Um, obviously coming out in New York, it's 30 over these points. Um, so it's just nice just to let it build up itself. As well as a little tip, if you ever leave Newark on a single yellow, don't speed around the corner because it comes at you out of nowhere. Nice little air shock. Because visibility can be a little bit different, uh, mm -hmm. just having a screen in front of you instead of real life, we've got the track monitor in the top mm -hmm. right hand corner. So that'll show you upcoming uh, speed limit changes and signals. Sweet. Just a handy extra. So does the green stand for a green signal, I'm guessing? Correct. Ah, lovely. All right. That does make life a bit easier. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm in a five car. Under this bridge, I'll be past the points and I can accelerate back to one, two, five. All right, there we go. So when we're out driving ourselves, um, obviously we need to think about passenger comfort. So we would normally go for quite a smooth, gradual increase in speed. Just if not, you can kind of feel a pull on the train. You can kind of, you know, chuck your fly in a little bit. Um, but obviously when you're on this, you can just go straight up as fast as you want. This controller's got a mind of its own. <laughs> Keeps going to look up. <laughs> uh, look. So, first level crossing here is Barnby. Yeah, coming out of New York, you got 
So it's about six level crossings. It's four B's in an old C that we uh, kind of use to remember it. Next one coming up is Bull Pit Lane. Right, I'm coming up to, I'm going to guess that means single yellow. So going past single yellow, we want to be doing no more than 100. I normally aim for, aim for about 90, just you've got grids and stuff like that that you can trip, so not the nicest. Ooh. Right, they get at 30% normally, or as close as I can get it. Oh, right, we we'll changed the grain. So on this, if you go past like a two yellow, single yellow, yeah. Get me reds out. Two yellow, single yellow. Does the um, AWS go off? It would normally, yes, if you had AWS enabled. All right, cool. So is it like a set button that you can press just to like kind of take care of that, or? Yeah. Um, so on the controller, if you had safety systems enabled, yeah, it's all um, under the B button. All right. So you press B to acknowledge. Ah, and that would right, activate okay. your vigilance pedal. AWS acknowledgements, etc. I right, cool. So our speed is coming up probably just slightly slower than normal, but to be fair, it depends what train you're driving. Some of them are quite good at accelerating, some of them are a bit slower. Um, if you've got the 800s, they do obviously take a bit longer for them being a heavier train. All right, so we've got a uh, red and green coming up. Is it red and green? I believe it is. But um, you've got a crossing that's coming up here that isn't really used anymore, but it's one that we still use called Hoff Lane. Yeah, I was driving up here the other day and I had my first red button call come through. The brakes are very good on the Azumas, I must give it to them. <laughs> if we receive a red button call, that means that there's a train within two signal areas of us that have pressed their red button. It's called a rec call, railroad man to group call. And that means it's something um, which needs the lines to be blocking all trains in that area to be stopped immediately. Um, so what happens is we have an alert go off in the cab um, through the GSMR and it basically has a message come up saying stop emergency. In those instances we need to put it straight into emergency so um, basically the train stops immediately and then we have a message that comes through um, from the driver who's pressed it um, and then we await the signaler to decide if we're going to proceed forward or if we need to wait. Um, can happen for a, l a lot of different reasons. Yeah, this is a bit slower to accelerate here, but normally at this point I'd be pretty close to the 125, if not there. Um, we're about to come up to what I use for my coasting point for the speed drop down to 115 as we head up towards Grantham. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do this, um, so you can just use it as a coasting point, but as you come around the curve here, uh, there's normally on the route there's caravans, um, there's like a like a gate, uh, so you can put it in a course there, or there's a signal just before Finkley Lane level crossing, you can put it in a course there and it should run down, so we'll put that to the test. Yeah, so this area here on the left, that's uh, caravans and just kind of like a bit of all land. All right, let's see where the signal is. There it is. So if you just pop it into course there, it should run down quite nicely for you. For you, these kind of wayfinding points would be a really important part of your knowledge of the routes in terms of working out where you are. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's some areas um, where it's just having those visual cu cu uh, clues. It's a kind of a reminder of like, right, I've got this coming up. Um, I need to do this, you know. I'll um, and obviously, even if it's kind of like, you know, in the middle of the night, having something that's quite prominent like that can help out quite a lot. Oh, that's another achievement unlocked, right? Not doing too bad here, am I? <laughs> All right. So, we've got men to cross over there, that's for Peacecliff. And we're coming up to Peacecliff Tunnel here. Again, as you go through Grand Film, speed's going to drop down to 100. Um, for me, um, 
in prep for that as well as the neutral section on the other side of this tunnel. I'll put it in the course straight away as soon as I go into the tunnel and I'll let it run pretty much until the other side of uh, Grantham. Let's make sure my speed doesn't topple over there. Alright, so in the course there. Now if it was a case of stopping at Grantham, I normally use the signal when you come out, if you start uh, breaking from there, that normally brings you down quite nicely to stop at Grantham. Got to be really wary of Grantham, it's um, got a very strong gradient and when we're out driving it's one of the known areas we have for low adhesion. Um, so it can be quite uh, fun to stop if it's a bit wet and slippy. Uh, it's not coming down too badly here. Normally be a bit lower, but again, it's fairly similar. Again, you're kind of using points of interest as reference points of what kind of speed you need to be doing in terms of get, slowing down for stations. Yeah, um, so there for Grantham, um, I've kind of got areas where I'm like, right, I'm coming around, I can see, I believe it's the range on my right, that 100 mile per hour is coming up, I should be at least down at like 100, 100 102 um, and then if it isn't falling off quite as I'd expected to then I know I need to kind of put it back on a bit more um, and then a lot of the time when I'm going through Grantham I know as soon as I'm at like 99 or 100 I can just coast it and it'll just carry itself quite nicely um, again the gradient in Grantham is it's well known on the route um, by drivers of how kind of we call it like a ball, because you go in, then it kind of just drops and then you come back out of it the other side. Um, so that's the other thing that we normally take into consideration. Um, if I was stopping a grand from there, uh, my rule of platforms is to be down to about 30 uh, for going on for them, because then it's just, you've got control, you, you've got a chance to like apply the additional brake if you need to, because not all the trains break the same. Some of them need a bit more, some of them need a bit less. Um, so it's just important that we judge it as we come in. Alright, so coming around at Ward Stoke Tunnel here, uh, the line speed is going to go back up to 125. Sure. Um, a little tip if they ever get flashes when they're playing around here, it means they're coming off at Stoke Junction. Get yeah, down. There we go, one, two, five boards there, lovely. Normally if I'm out driving on the route I'd be waving at the drivers as they go past as well. But I love a driver's wave. I like the fact it actually vibrates when you go over the points. That, that's something new we've added for the latest game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's quite good that because you do feel it when you go over the points. Some more than others, but um, no, it's, it's a nice little feature to have there. And you've got the flashing greens, that's really cool. Uh, I know you like PlayStations. Um, there's an added extra on, I think, PS4 and PS5. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's the light on the controller. Yeah, it yeah. Will actually, change colour to coordinate with the next signal colour. Oh, so all right, that's cool. Extra. Oh, wow. All right, our trains are capped at uh, speed, so I'll just uh, reduce that speed down a lot. This is from doing 127. Might have to uh, ask Hitachi about that. Why is my train suddenly breaking its cap? All right, there we go. It's coasted there. Ah, I didn't realise that would be an accomplishment, but I'll take it. <laughs> Zoom back out. Put my wipers on. Wouldn't normally take me this long. <laughs> All right, let's have a look. Woo, five.
There they are. Yeah, it's always really nice driving on the sand because like the, the like views and stuff like that are absolutely spectacular especially if you're driving early on a morning you've got like the sun rising up over the fields and that you can obviously see all the deer and foxes and all that playing that's have to say i'm going to be late in peterbury i don't think i'm going to make it in the next 25 seconds <laughs> Right, so we should be coming up to bike from neural section shortly here. This used to always be a rare fun neural section. It didn't always um, have the boards there, um, so you can never tell, but it's actually here, and then you just pop in a coast. So normally in these conditions, with it being snow, um, we'd have to apply the snow brake. So just press that on. And all the snow brake does, it just applies just a little bit of pressure just to keep the brake pads nice and warm. Well, not nice and warm, just stops them from freezing over and affecting the brake performance. I think it's literally about 0.8 like bars of pressure, so it's, it's really minimal, but it does it at different intervals. I'm in four power here, but I'm losing, I'm still losing quite a lot. Normally it wouldn't drop off that quick. I think even though I'm in there, so I've just dropped another mile power, but I'm in four. So acceleration wise, we are a lot stronger, especially since we're on a downward gradient. Normally the speed there would pick up rather than dropping off. This signal here is one of the bands of my life. Constantly, if I come round, it's normally at two yellows. They're particularly busy part of the routes for that reason. We've recently had a recontrol done at Peterborough, so I think it's just it, it's been part of the team and problems there. It just depends. Obviously, there's you've got Tallington coming up where you can get from the slow line on the fast line and vice versa. Um, so th there could be a lot going on. And then as you get closer towards Peterborough, they have um, double blocking in play, so it could even just be like kind of off the back of that, even though it is quite far out still. Why am I losing so much power? That's in the DRS set. Why was that set? I was pulled up. Ooh, strange. I shouldn't have been able to get any power there if the DRS has been set. But then again, if that's been isolated. It's actually what? I think there's something wrong for me trains. <laughs> But I'm still losing power here. Oh, two yellows. Oh, right, I'm glad I've lost power. All right, get it down, get it down. Oh, see, so, yeah, straight to a green. I've so been in my life, never mind. All right, up to full. Why am I losing power here? How do you find conditions like snow affect your adhesion traction? Um, it's a lot slippier. Um, you need to be a lot more aware of kind of what your normal braking is and then actually think right does that give me enough time to then adjust um, and kind of give you a, a gap of safety just in case the train doesn't grip obviously down here this button there the wheel slip if we have any issues of traction kind of gripping to the track or it's not breaking as it should do that will light up to give us a heads up um, and then if the brake has to be put into more than 50% where well, the, sand, the sand will automatically dispense to try and get us a bit more grip on the track. But um, 
it's certainly more of a challenge, um, even just in freezing conditions, obviously it can cause the, uh, where are we at there? Um, the brakes just kind of freeze over. Um, we have issues where the horn could stop working because that's been froze over. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot more fault that has to go into it. Right, so it's this, the descent into Peterborough now. So as I said, coming in here, it's not unusual to stack it in like two yellows and whatnot, just do it with the double blocking. All that means is you basically have an additional signal section um, for safety. So if anybody passes a signal at danger, it's not then going to be kind of straight into the next signal section where somebody is. It's just giving you that safety net. Um, there's certain areas where they do tend to have it in just for kind of safety reasons more than anything else. That's good to know. Yeah, I believe they have it in at um, Stevenage as well. But it is, it's, it's a, it is a good thing. It's a really good safety feature, especially for how busy it is at Peterborough. Obviously, you've got your freight depots, um, you've got DB and GBR down here. Um, there's a lot of different lines and the go here, there and everywhere. So it is really quite important. Hey, for wearing injunctions just up ahead. No, because I'm only doing 90 mile per hour, this is uh, kind of messes with my normal approach just slightly, so we'll see how we do. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you out four. I'm just going to coast you down until I get to Bren. So this is where an injunction coming up here. It's normally if our trains are going to Lincoln, you get to go under that. Um, I had me, I was a passenger on it a couple of weeks, a couple of, well, just before Christmas, I think it was. Um, and it was a weird experience going under it. It was just like, wow, okay. All right, for course, and that's came down really quick. Well, it's fine. See, it's normally coming down here where I start to get my restrictives and I'm like, oh, come on, just let me through. So about to come into Bretton Newell section here. I haven't seen the board for it. That's the only thing, but I haven't really looked for it. it just normally kind of sticks out. Just fine. Yeah, I'm coming in way too slow here. Let's pick that up a bit. And there we go, two yellows. As if by magic. Is it? Two yellows, yeah. Right. And because these signal sections are quite short, um, normally I'd put the brake in a little bit heavier than I normally would do, just so then I don't have to worry about tripping any grids or anything like that. Um, going past two yellows, as I said, aim for about 100 maximum. Um, I normally aim for about 90, and it's the same with the single yellow. Ooh, wrong word. The single yellow that's going to be at the end, it's normally just 60, aim for 50, and then 30 by the end of the platform. Coming in really slowly. Right. So is it very often on the game where you can be put on like the other lines and whatnot, or does it just depend? In terms of like dynamic changes to traffic? Um, just kind of like slow lines and whatnot like like that. In a normal service, the service are kind of there to replicate a real time table. <laughs> Alright, cool. There'd be various different ones that take different lines but they will always play out the same. Right. Whereas we have like scenarios, which mm -hmm. are, there might be particular events that happen on the line. Do you ever put any wrong routes on, like uh, where a driver can be caught out? So it's like the signal I've just gone past there, it has the six junction indicators on it. Okay. For me, a wrong route would be if I'd got a six, because it's not electrified. So do you ever have anything on where like somebody could be caught out by that or is it kind of just nice running where it's not that bad? Uh, that, that's an interesting one. Um, I'm not sure if you have covered anything quite like that before, but yeah, that would be an interesting scenario to create, yeah. I bet. Yeah, because it's, it's kind of with the driving, it's the root knowledge, which is, I dare say, the hardest part to learn. 
because it's not just learning like the actual route itself and your breaking points and you know the general handling of the train it's actually the risks associated um so it's like if i'd got the sixth feather there i'd be chucking it into emergency and having to ring the signal and say look the wrong route is here um i kind of i can't go into platform six and uh, just break up just a touch see how it comes down it's coming down quite nicely that so all right that's way too slow Come on, go on, Trent. You can do it. A little engine that could. <laughs> right. Rule number one: never put the uh, speed back on. But you know, just so I can get in that green zone, make a slight exception to do. It's actually stopping a bit short than what I normally would do with this. Yeah, at least you're not running any reds. Yeah. All right, just since this is the optimal zone, I'm going to stop here, but normally I'd go further up uh, to that stop board. All right, so... So, on a red, so the area is set. All right, so, paper all, doors on the left. There you go. Oh my god. Alright, I found out we'll do the horn. Game changer. Hey, even when I'm not in it, lovely. Nice little walk around Peter, but this actually looks really realistic of Peter. Over. So yeah, we do we do try to put a lot of effort into the station model details. Oh yeah, it's in with the toilets there. <laughs> Nice. Oh, trend's leaving with ours. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, the computer's taken over. Yeah, that's fine. I've been relieved of Peterborough before, so it's sound. Um... Yeah, it could have left me a brolly. Even down to the type of bins. That's really cool, that. Now the question is, have you got Starbucks across the road here? <laughs> <laughs> Not Starbucks, but uh, we do have something. Oh, liquid bean cafe. Ooh, very nice. Looks a bit like a Costa cup, that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look if we're going up the stairs. No copyright infringement. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. I like how colourful the umbrellas are. <laughs> you said how route knowledge is a really important part of what it is to be a train driver. Mm -hmm. um, how is your visibility during night and like how much can you actually see and how much do you need to depend on other factors in order to navigate? So in darkness, um, to be fair, for us to pass out, we have to do so many hours in darkness. So we kind of, it's as if we get like a, a different view of the route so that we kind of learn. So um, on a night we have to have the dimmed lights on. So you can see to an extent quite far ahead, depending on what the environment's like. So if you're in an area where, you know, there's like roads, so you've got your like kind of, um, light on the side of the roads, that'll give you extra vision. If you're in kind of the middle of nowhere, you can see, if, if they're quite short signal sections, you can see a lot more, because obviously you've got the lights from them, you've got the lights from the position lights uh, and whatnot. Um, however, if it's thick fog, um, I had it before where I could barely see over my nose cone. So it's uh, very much uh, right. Let's try and pick up on where I'm at. What can I kind of see that can kind of tell me where I'm at? And I know for me, it was as I was coming down Stoke Bank um, and my coasting point for Grand from his bridge 230 and I had that pop up and I'd seen it and I was like, right, I know exactly where I am um, for that. 
So it completely just depends on your location, uh, the weather type and whatnot as well. So it's, uh, it can be quite fun in games at times. So it is, it's quite good. That's, that's really interesting because I guess for the average player, they're going into this kind of blind. They don't have the root knowledge. They do have all the other systems like the, the heads up display to rely on. Okay. So how much do you rely on kind of ambient light compared to the light that is put out by the headlights on the train itself? Two seconds, I couldn't eat, or, couldn't eat it over the train coming past there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the difference between um, like your reliance on ambient light from like buildings and stuff and cars and roads compared to what you can see with just the headlights? Um, so because of how often we actually drive in the darkness, it doesn't make a massive difference because it's even in the darkness, you pick up on kind of um, certain locations, certain like uh, for say Neots, for instance, um, I know I've got a speed drop down to 120, but I know when to drop down to the 120 because of the curvature of the track. So it's like, it's not even just what you can see, it's what you can feel as well as that, um, which helps a lot. So ambient light is good for seeing stuff like from like, you know, outside of the train, but it's not kind of like a be all and end all because you just kind of get a sense for it. You just learn the route that well that you know it um, kind of inside and out. It, as you say, it's not something you necessarily rely on because mm -hmm. of the conditions. It, it may be fit for fog. Yeah. You may not be able to see anything. Okay. Exactly. And it's even safe, like, you know, there was like a blackout on those, like, kind of amp on the ambient lights and whatnot it's then building the reliance on that way you don't need it as a driver because you just you know the route that well um that's why we go through so many tests and whatnot to actually make sure we are safe to be out there by ourselves the lifts work uh maybe see if you can jump on one of the other the trains you can ride as a passenger all right oh i've restocked the first aid point all right Sorry. Oh, these aren't even the other right. passengers are not very good about keeping to the left. You're not kidding, Jesus. Right, let's see. Are we on platform two there. Yes. So. No, run. <laughs> it's only why I'm looking on the cameras at this point. Like, no, wait for me. Right, there we go. All right, I'm on board. Yeah, uh, open up. Yeah, they'd normally have the uh, orange light going around them at this point, unless this is going to a depot, but it shouldn't be from here. Have a look. Doors open. How much time do you get to spend as a passenger, if at all, really? <sighs> um, there's some diagrams that we have where we'll be passenger for part of the way, so starting from Newcastle, we've got, off the top of my head, we've got a diagram where we'll go to Doncaster as a passenger, then drive from there. There's another one where we'll be a passenger to York. And then, I like the fact you can see the space a lot differently here as well. Um, there's another one where we go to York and then we take over the um, train from Middlesbrough on a morning. Um, other than that, we've got a couple where we'll do some of the drive back from London um, on one of the later trains. Um, it's the one that's booked to go on the slow line, so it's quite a long drive back if you did it all by yourself. Um, so not a massive amount of time, like when we're actually driving. Most of the time it's we're in like the seat up front. Um, oh, can I sit there? Oh, there we go. But, um, yeah, not a great deal of time, if I'm being quite honest. Yeah, and unfortunately, that, that's as far as the scope of the route goes. That's fine. It's not simulated any further than that. <laughs> oh, that's all right. If you like this video, drop us a like, leave us a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Yeah.